Bob here, old school gamer, brand new Atari hat, check that out, in my bathroom. And today I wanted to do more than just gripe about video games. I do have gripes, and they will be back. I have plenty to talk about and things I want to discuss. But uh, for this one, because it's the holidays, Christmas right around the corner, New Year's coming up, uh, I thought I'd reflect back on some, uh, I don't know, old video game memories and things that brought me joy and, uh, you know, wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and a Merry Kwanzaa and Happy... You know, all that. Whatever whatever it is you celebrate. If you're like me and celebrate Festivus, then Festivus for the rest of us. Got you covered. At any rate, uh, my earliest uh, memories of playing video games dates back to like 1977, 78. Uh, one of the first games that I remember playing is uh, the building that we lived in. Uh, when you went downstairs and went out the lobby, there was a flight of stairs. When you go down the stairs, there was a door to the left and a door to the right. The door to the right, as you were exiting the building, was a uh, hot dog place. Really good food. They served ice cream and like all kinds of good stuff in there. That place was awesome. I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember the name of it, but they were awesome. The guys that worked there were awesome and great. But to the left was a bar. Back when I was a kid, you know, Kids were allowed to hang out in bars, as I uh, uh, normally did with my father, who was a bartender. And I would go to the bar where he worked and uh, hang out with him. You know, he'd give me a bunch of quarters, go in the back, play some games. I'd go back there and play uh, Missile Command and Commando. One of my, oh my God, that, that game is awesome. Uh, but this particular bar had... Uh, Space Invaders. As I've gotten older, I no longer have a fondness for Space Invaders. Honestly, I I can't stand the game. I think it's I think it's boring. But that was that was like the first that uh, memory that I have of playing games. And then around 1980, that same bar got a Pac-Man machine, and oh my god, like Pac-Man, Pac-Man is great. And uh, that's where I first played it. And then, uh, you know, once we got our Atari, which I remember that vividly, uh, my sister and I had come home from school. It was around 81, 82. I think it was 82. And uh, we come in the house, and normally Dad was sitting at the table, you know, drinking coffee, reading his, reading his newspaper. And uh, he wasn't there. Like, where the hell is he? Go into the bedroom where... We had a, a television set up, and there he was, playing an Atari 2600, just sitting there playing away. And and that was that was awesome. It was awesome to see him play. It was, uh, you know, Atari. Love Atari. Love this hat. Look at that hat. Like, all around. I left the tag on it because it says Atari. Like, oh, Atari. Memories of Atari. Back when they were... were like top of the line real good and uh like i've said in a, a previous video like the the video game crash of 83 was great because i was able to pick up you know atari games for like a quarter 50 cents i'd go to the store with like three four dollars and come back with a bag of games like we had so many atari games like it was it was awesome and uh not to say that you know when the nintendo rolled around and that, you know, that's another thing that, that's always bothered me. Like, I went with the Nintendo over the Sega Master System, even though I really wanted a Sega Master System. And that's mostly because, you know, all my friends either had or were getting a Nintendo. And back then, you know, being poor, you really couldn't get games. You know, like, I, I can go out and buy brand new games right now if I wanted to and then do the same thing tomorrow and the day after that. But when I was a kid, I couldn't do that. Uh... So what we did was we would all get together and be like, you know, I'm getting a game, uh, you're getting a game, you're getting a game. Let's figure out what we're getting so we don't all get the same thing. And then we can trade games 
with each other. And that's how we played most of our games, by swapping swapping games with each other. And uh, yeah, it was it was fun, but I, I still wish I had a Sega Master System when I was a kid. I have one now, and uh, I mean, I've had one for years, not... I didn't just now get one, which, by the way, brings me to a, uh, a game recommendation for the end of this, because I'm going to cut this short, because it's the holidays, everybody's got to get out there and enjoy yourselves, you know, hang out with friends, family, play some games, don't forget to play games, at some point, during the course of whatever, play something, and uh, my all-time favorite, now this is this is a hard one for me, because I have a lot of like really good games that I love. But if I had to pick one, if I was stranded on a desert island and only could bring one game and had no internet, no uh no no online, like what what would I bring? What would be my all-time favorite game? What what would what would be the game that I could play constantly and never get bored of? And that game is my hero for the Sega Master System. This game came out in uh, PAL regions, you know, Japan and uh, and whatnot on cartridge form, but in the U.S. we got it on the Sega card. Uh, I love the game so much that I actually tracked down and found a cartridge version. So now I have it on card and and cartridge and for those that don't know what a master system game look like this is a card look at that looks like a like a little credit card goes in the in the original sega master system because the master system 2 they cut out the card slot so you didn't have this but that's my my hero on card i have a couple of these this one's this one's seen better days but it still works and then the uh cartridges look like that now if you find a Sega Master System game, uh, North American games mostly had red labels. Uh, European PAL regions are blue labeled games. Don't let nobody try to tell you that you know blue labels are rare and they're more expensive because they're not. It's just a European version of the exact same game. They're not expensive because I have several blue label games and it's the exact same game. So. Sega Master System, great system. My Hero is an awesome game. You know, your uh, your main character, he's he's out with his chick one day wearing a suit. And by the way, this was an arcade game. So if you want to, like, Google it or look it up, like, the arcade game is f fantastic also. But Master System game follows it closely with one exception. And uh, in the game, your uh, your dude's out with his, uh, with his chick. Some guys come by, steal the chick and uh, you're off to rescue her. Uh, the difference being in the arcade version, each level was a different uh, enemy. Like there was a gang for the first level and then there was ninjas and then there was, uh, I don't know, Indians or something. I, I forget, it's been a long time since I played that game. But in this, it's the gang constantly. Like you get to the end of the level, you beat the gang leader, you save the chick, and then he just takes her again. In the arcade, once you beat that level's enemy, you know, he's sitting there sobbing and somebody else comes in and takes her. But it's a really good game. I love them. So get out there, play some games, enjoy the holidays, you know, Merry Christmas and Happy Festivus and, and all that other uh, good stuff. And uh, I'll be back with some more rants and memories and uh, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Go Atari. <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas. Bye. Happy holidays and all that. Thanks.